The Floor Academy podcast is sponsored by Trelama, the trade labor marketplace, where businesses can find skilled trade labor, such as flooring installers, and where flooring installers and other skilled tradespeople can find permanent or project work. You can set up your profile at trelama.com, T-R-A-L-A-M-A.com, or download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play. And remember, Trelama is always free for skilled tradespeople. Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hadeen, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Phoenix, Arizona. Our mission is to get you from playing contractor to running a successful and profitable business that supports your dreams. We are here to talk with flooring professionals from all over the country about the issues that matter to you. I want to encourage you to learn while you earn. Don't forget to check out our website and merch at flooracademypod.com or to become a patron over at patreon.com slash Academy. Even $5 a month goes a long way to help this content to continue to be published. There's also links in the show notes. This week's guest is Dr. Joe Coletta. Dr. Joe owns and operates All Seasons Chiropractic in Gilbert, Arizona. With a background in sports medicine, she uses her chiropractic skills to holistically approach problems her clients have with their bodies. Listen in as we talk about how we can better care for our bodies from how we move them to how we can take care of them with chiropractic care and better maintain them with nutrition. Dr. Joe, are you on the line? I am on the line. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. Thank you for joining me. Of course, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so you are uh, my family's chiropractor. You, you, uh, you know, we met through a BNI group we did here in in Phoenix, and now that I am putting out all kinds of interesting content to folks in the in the flooring industry. Well, I do focus on business. There's more to business than just the numbers, and so I figured. You you know the body and how it works and functions and well, flooring installers want to say this career path will destroy their body from doing it. The the short six years that I have, I find that while that's kind of true, it's probably mostly due to poor movement and the fact that I'm gonna go lug you know, 150 pounds by myself up a set of stairs when I really shouldn't be doing that. So most of it's like self-induced abuse. Oh, for sure. For sure. And um, there's probably better ways to do things. And I figured you would, uh, that that's your field. So we'll let you, you know, explain how we can better take care of ourselves and, and manage our, our bodies. Um and we'll go from there. But, you know, I'd like to have you introduce yourself. Give us like the uh, the quick little bit of who you are, what you do, why you do it and, and get us that background of, you know, kind of how you fell into it and where you are now. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Yes, my name is Dr. Joe Coletta. And as you stated, I am a chiropractor. Uh, I also have additional training in sports medicine on top of my chiropractic degree. And prior to going to chiropractic school, my undergrad focus was on nutrition. So I just like to attack the body um, holistically from all aspects. And as you were alluding to kind of in that intro, um, a lot of people who are in more manual type labor environments do need to be highly aware of their body movements. Just like when somebody goes to the gym and is training, you are making sure that your posture is perfect throughout the squat so that you're not overloading one area and not focusing on the other area. The same thing is true in the example you use carrying 150 pounds upstairs. Well, that's pretty much just multiple lunges which, you know, can be performed in the gym with perfect posture and people do that for years. And so it's just learning those little biomechanics to preserve your joint integrity for as long as possible. For sure. Okay. Well, so I, you have 
training and, and, and you know you went to you went to medical school and and you get the title of doctor but you're not a real doctor you're just a chiropractor right <laughs> right i love that comment if you don't want to get a second date with a chiropractor tell her that on the date right <laughs> um but yes <laughs> that definitely disqualifies that comment disqualifies you from date number two fyi no um all joking aside i mean chiropractors hear this all the time and you know we kind of take it tongue in cheek and some of it's just um, you know, not in a negative way, but the actual definition, it's just ignorance. It's not understanding the training that chiropractors go through, uh, which isn't wrong. Like, it's not like we get this, you know, cheat sheet when you turn X age, here's like everybody's, you know, schooling information. But, you know, we have kind of gotten a bad rap over the years, but chiropractors are classified as primary care providers. So as much as your primary care doctor can diagnose you with a strep throat or, you know, organ issues like, you know, a gallbladder dysfunction or a thyroid issue or diagnose you with, you know, some sort of arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis or something like that. Chiropractors can as well. We can order labs, we can order x-rays, we can order MRI, CTs. What varies is how we address those conditions where allopathically they're going to do surgery and medications, which isn't wrong at all. But chiropractors are going to first attempt to restore the body to its natural state by through adjustments, through nutrition, through the use of maybe some more natural type supplements um, to kind of heal the body as much as possible. Am I saying that you shouldn't go to, you know, an allopathic doctor? Not at all. Like there we each have our own um fields of expertise. And I would never say that there's something wrong with the allopathic, um, you know, field at all. My son had to have abdominal surgery because he has Crohn's disease and he perforated his intestine. We were in that emergency room. We were like, yes, 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 please, please. You know, because there's a place for everything. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's chiropractic tends to be more proactive, keeping you from having to, you know, take medication and have surgery. Okay. And I look, I mean, I'm all for Western medicine. My, my daughter oh. wouldn't even be here if I wouldn't actually oh. probably be alive without Western medicine. Like I was born oh, and put yeah. on a helicopter and flown to a different hospital and put in a incubator for a little bit. Then my daughter spent 66 days in the NICU. Like, Oh, it, yeah. there's I mean, definitely my youngest was in the NICU too. It, so I mean, it has its place, but I think the, mm -hmm. that more traditional Eastern medicine approach of like, look, we need to find a root cause and and what's you know fix it as naturally as possible, definitely has its its place as well. It's been around a lot longer than Western medicine, and it it does it work. And so when you just shove pills down people's throats. It, that doesn't necessarily it, you mask a lot of things in my opinion and i don't want to get make this a debate between one or the other and all of that but it, no, to, to me no. it's I, it there's definitely a a great approach there of like you're broken somehow let's find a way to actually fix it instead of just masking it right i can come home every day and i could find access to um, I don't know, some kind of tranquilizing drug, I'm sure, on the streets and just pop a pill Alcohol. or two. Well, that works <laughs> yeah. too, but like, we, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you know, I could take some Advil or I can go find something a little bit higher than, than that, right? I could, mm -hmm. uh, I, whatever they used to prescribe all the time, like you can go to the dentist and they're like, here, just take these, right? And you can... Oh yeah, the opioids. Uh, yeah, right? You can, you, you find some of that on the street and you, you can feel great. But if I just mask the pain and I don't know that I'm actually in pain and I keep going and going, I'm just going to make the problem worse because I'm not fixing it. So... Oh, 100%. That, that's what I'm, what I'm after here and kind of where I want this to, to go, right? So how do we use our our bodies properly right we're constantly lifting we're constantly on our knees we're and it's not like we won't even get up to walk across a room a lot of times like we'll just, we'll just scoot. scoot across <laughs> on our knees or you know walk on our knees essentially and so yes knee pads help a lot but there's there's all kinds of things so i don't know where once again this is this is your area of expertise so like 
where do we even start in trying to care for our body and make it last as long as possible so that, you know, maybe one day we, we can get down and run around with grandkids when we're old enough to have them. Yes, for sure. And a lot of that just comes from proper biomechanics. So there's a lot of, you know, references that you can look at um, via the internet if you want to like even hire a personal trainer for a session or two and be like, Hey, listen, you know, I'm lifting this weight. I have to take it up steps. Can you show me, you know, biomechanically ergonomically the most effective way to do that? It's, it's kind of like looking at a trained fighter versus somebody who's untrained, intoxicated in a bar, right? Mm -hmm. A trained fighter, when they punch, they punch straight out because number one, it's the shortest distance between two points. And number two, then you have the most force behind the, um, strike versus somebody who's swinging wildly in a, you know, altercation in a bar. And so it's just learning those from, you know, myself or other healthcare providers that are actually trained in the ergonomics and biomechanics of body movement. And most chiropractors, you know, do talks about <clears throat> proper ergonomics and the, you know, whether you're a sedentary person working, you know, data entry or you're seated at a desk all day long, that's as detrimental to the body as somebody who does more manual labor where you're carrying weight, you're lifting. And, and at times being sedentary is almost more detrimental. They call it the new smoking. Sitting is as detrimental to the body as smoking is because People tend to have bad posture when they sit for extended periods of time. They're slumped over and the spine just isn't meant to withstand that posture for extended periods of time. And, you know, I was like in the airport flying home from teaching in Oakland. And if it wasn't a minor, I would have taken a photo of this girl, the position she was sitting in for two hours while we waited, waited for our delayed flight with her neck. So flexed over as she was playing a game on her phone. Mm -hmm. So it's just these little things that, we can alter and change throughout the day that have a dramatic effect on our bodies. Well, so there's a good point is that I think a lot of us will probably put in an eight, 10 hour day and we're like, okay, well that was all physical activity. Like I'm good. And then we get home and you know, you can do what you do, but you're going to, you might pop open a beer. You might just sit on the couch and then you like you veg out and you're just like, okay, I heard all over and, and I'm done. So now I, yeah. I've worked all day, but then I immediately go into like just downtime. Lounge. And so yeah, what is, mode. you know, what's that actually doing to me instead of walking it off a little bit and doing stretches? So it definitely does. So, you know, when you're sitting on the couch, couches definitely don't put you in that biomechanically ergonomic ergonomically correct posture either, right? They're kind of fluffy, they're soft, you sink into it, or you're slouched over, you know, uh, your wife is snugged up on you. However, you know, you spend your evening Netflixing, Huluing, or, you know, mm -hmm. marathoning some TV show, it just is, um, you know, becomes that other layer of damage to the body. So yes, definitely getting up, making sure that we're stretching, making sure that we're rolling out our muscles that we've been working all day, going for a walk in the evening, even though, yes, you're correct. You've been physical all day, but we're meant to be up and moving and physical and active, right? Like when we were developed thousands of years ago, there weren't cars, there wasn't mass transit. So everybody walked everywhere mm -hmm. and they were active during the day, gathering their food, preparing their meals because you couldn't just like roll through McDonald's in your car and get a, you know, family <laughs> meal. Um, and so, um, people think like, Oh, I worked a physical job. I can just go home and chill out. Well, you know, when you look at the evolutional development of the body, we're meant to be pretty much from the time we're up to, you know, at night, active and moving. And if you want to see somebody with the best posture, look at kids. 
look at how they're able to play with a toy where they squat down, um, you know, where their butt is pretty much touching their heels and they can stay in that position for extended periods of time. And those are more natural, organic positions for the body to be in. And you see in third world countries where they don't have as as many amenities as we do, they tend to, you'll see 60, 70 year old men sitting, you know, kind of um, squatting in circles, talking to each other in that position that our toddlers are in that we never go in again because we're sitting in chairs. If you want to see how deconditioned of a society we've become, go get on a plane and watch how people sit down in their chairs, right? They tend to just plunk back into the chair Mm -hmm. because their, you know, butt muscles, their glute muscles or hamstring, their quads don't have the strength to actually lower themselves into a chair. And then when it's time to get off the plane, I don't know how many times I've had my hair pulled because somebody's had to grab the seat back in front of them to get physically lift themselves with their upper body out of the chair because they're so deconditioned in their lower extremity. And it just plays into overall health of the entire organism when, you know, you have this deconditioning that occurs. Man, I love talking to people in different fields than me. That's fascinating. (laughs) I can, it's like I walk in a place, I'm like, wow, this floor is installed horrible. You get on a plane, you're like, look at all these people. They can't even sit down and stand up properly. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm always looking and watching at how people walk. And, you know, I can diagnose somebody sometimes just from their gait. It's kind of a joke with um, my kids and Darnell. He'll be like, what's wrong with that person? Look at the way they're walking. (laughs) Oh, man. It's it's weird how your what you do transfers over to other areas just because that's that's what you do yeah impregnates every aspect of your life totally totally um okay (laughs) so i there's there's okay i I don't like what you're saying right like there's as spoiled americans whether people want to believe that's true to this day or not i oh please i I, 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 look i get it i think the american dream is is very alive and and well and you can still easily succeed in this country if you put your mind to it um so there's but to to divulge into that topic yeah we're not going to go down that road but you know essentially (laughs) you're you're saying look at how kids interact and, and use their bodies And I I think you're right. Like we get spoiled because of all the amenities we have. And so it's not, we don't build the proper, proper muscle tone and, and whatnot. Uh, You know, I, my daughter has down syndrome as as you know, and so Mm -hmm. she has low muscle tone everywhere. And there's a physical therapist over here every week working with her. And like, it's interesting to see the differences between what she struggles with and then what my son can do and what my wife and I can do. And then how, you know, all of that kind of interacts and it, you know, she had to, she's, she finally got some orthotics to inserts for her shoes. And like the, the week before she had to like walk across something and, and balance and she's always struggled with it. And then just having the orthotics for like three days before the therapist came back and she had to like walk across the same thing. It's a night and day difference just because her muscles are being, supported properly now to like function and so um it, it's crazy how little things like that matter right if you don't have a chair and you just naturally have to sit in that position that you described like toddlers do your body is is working in a way that we don't generally use it because you are using your legs and you are using your core whereas you sit in a chair and you just use your core yes <clears throat> Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, 90% of the population in the United States has uh, deconditioned core muscles, which supports the spine. And then add on to the fact that we're talking like 60 to 70% of the population is also overweight or obese. So for every extra, every 10 
extra pounds that you're carrying that translates to a hundred pounds on the spine. So if you're 30, 40 pounds overweight, your spine is actually carrying 300 to 400 extra pounds of <clears throat> weight because of how it's distributed and the um, support that the spine needs. And then add to the fact that not only if you're obese, then you probably don't work out and you're even more conditioned. So then there's a bigger pull on the spine when the supporting musculature isn't able to assist. And then you're looking at just the ligaments trying to support the spine. Hmm. So it just, it keeps compounding, right? It gets worse and worse. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, hundred percent. Okay. And I, I, you know, even though that that's like, I can say, you know, I probably need to cut back on the, on the beer intake. Cause I keep putting on weight, even though I do a physical job. It's cause I yeah. come home and I sit around to do nothing and I, and I know it. And th- I, that's not good. Like I have to find a way to change this lifestyle so that I can be healthier. And there's a longer term thing going on here for me to I you know I I don't want to become this fat lazy slob that does nothing and can't move around my house like that's not going to be productive for anybody no no definitely not um so what kind of like you said you know we could talk with a personal trainer and and look at how to do things more biomechanically and, and how they work what kind of, you know, like basic stretches should we be doing? Or, you know, I before we got on, I was talking about, you know, most likely a lot of like knee damage probably comes because we, we overextend and we reach for things behind us while we're on our knees and not instead of turning around to grab it. So mm-hmm. how like what kind of body mechanics or, or simple stretches or little insights can you give based on that information that are going to help us extend the use of our body so with the knee area specifically we definitely have to focus there's one almost like magic muscle um that can it gets basically like shut off any time there's inflammation or swelling in the knee joint um and it's called your vastus medialis oblique i know it sounds like a big old name and everybody so everybody just calls it by its initials the vmo and it's that kind of teardrop shaped muscle that sits on top of and on the inside of your knee it's kind of shaped like a teardrop <clears throat> when it's developed correctly and that plays such a large role in balancing out the four muscles that make up your quads, right? And so it is the only muscle that pulls your kneecap towards the center of your body. The other three muscles in your thigh actually pull the kneecap in the opposite direction. And so when you're talking about knee health, that is like one of the muscles that I have all of my clients focus on um, that have knee issues. And the easiest way to focus on that muscle group is actually walking backwards. So anybody who goes to the gym, I'm like, when you warm up, you warm up on the treadmill and you're walking backwards because the vastus medialis oblique muscle is responsible for the last 20 degrees of extension. So when you take your knee and straighten your leg out all the way, Mm -hmm. that last little bit is the job of that um, VMO muscle. And like I said, anytime you have any sort of swelling, bam, within five minutes, it basically just shuts down. And so anytime you've had a knee swelling, knee injury, um, that's always one of the first muscle groups that's addressed to get it back turned on. And so everything in the body is kind of like this domino effect. If I lose strength in my quadriceps, like we were talking about, the ability to sit and stand under your own muscle strength goes out the window when you don't have strength in your thigh muscles which then balance your pelvis, which then connect to the spine. So it's just this huge domino effect. Mm -hmm. Um, And 
people, you know, it's one of those things that because you can't see the long term effects of it, um, oh, I'll worry about that later. Oh, I'll, later on, you know, and it's no, it's something that has to be, you know, thought about on a daily basis, addressed on a daily basis. So that once you're done with, you know, you're 56, you're looking to retire, your body's actually then going to be able to enjoy your retirement. Otherwise, you know, <clears throat> people are having total knee replacements, total hip replacements, back surgery, spine surgery, because they weren't taking care of themselves when they were younger. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the you know, the biggest thing for flooring guys is, you know, I've had one knee surgery. I've had two, right? Like that's going to be yep. that or, you know, maybe some shoulder surgery here and there just for repetitive mm -hmm. motion doing that stuff. But I'd say I, I knee surgery is probably the biggest thing that you ever hear about people, you know, older guys talking about. And so uh, walking backwards, is that like go to the gym five minutes on the treadmill walking backwards? Ten, Like how long is this kind of like warm up and, and what do we want to do. So anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes is a good warm up and that entire time walking backwards. I usually tell like my women, um, you know, they tend to do more of the shopping around the house. So when you're standing in line at the grocery store, um, stand on one leg. And because you can balance yourself on the shopping cart, you're just going to slightly bend the knee down, stand back up, slightly bend the knee down, stand back up. And so that repetitive action standing on one leg um, focuses on that muscle group to strengthen and stabilize the knee joint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Little, little things. Uh, what about, you know, like I was saying, like, you know, we'll overextend reaching behind us. And I've heard guys of, you know, tearing like an ACL just because they re constantly are overextending and on their knee. And it's not like, it's not meant to bend that way. It definitely doesn't feel good when you start reaching 180 degrees behind you without like turning your body some. So oh, where, sure. you know, where are we looking to like, have better health in in that area and i know it's hard to like give specifics in this format right we're not in the same oh, yeah. room you're not looking at actions that are actually happening but if, if you're just sitting down on on your knees right and so then your butt's on your like Heel. heels and you and you go to reach behind you like how far is safe to extend before i should just get up and move some and <laughs> you know, not straight. I, I would, I would say so 180 degrees in front of you. So once you put your arm out to the directly out to the side, um, so from that position where you're basically, you know, like your arms are spread Eagle and in front of you is a safe region. If you have to extend your arm past 180 degrees, then you need to turn your body. Um, otherwise, not only is it um, hard on the knee, um, but it's also going to be that twisting action and being flexed is what damages the discs in the spine most. Mm -hmm. That's the position that degenerates the disc the most is being rotated and flexed at the same time. Okay. And I just, I want to make it, clear visually because we don't have anything so you're saying yes. i'm gonna put my arm straight to the left of me straight to the right to me and that's my 180 degree line not mm -hmm. from in front of me to behind me correct okay correct from from the sides yes okay um let's see here what else i mean you're so you got you know everything <laughs> <laughs> I, I just got to think of the i just got to think of the right subject. stuff <laughs> I, correct no i just got to think of the right stuff um <laughs> What's the hardest part of starting and growing a flooring business? Getting clients. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, you need a marketing partner like Traffic Digital. Traffic is a full-service marketing agency that works with flooring companies all across the country. They'll help you get a continuous stream of customers using the most modern online marketing techniques. So visit www.trafficdigital.com today to sign up for free marketing analysis. Don't forget, Traffic is with a K. All right. So obviously, you know, you're the you're a chiropractor. So if I'm having issues and I want to take that more like holistic approach, is there and I go into a chiropractor, is there a specific initial 
like diagnosis I need to ask for where you're going to like go into more detail about how I walk and, and watching how I move and, and get more detailed than I just go in and you look my spine over right, and you flip me and crack me and say, you're good, go. It just depends on, you know, just like uh, we have, you know, MDs, DOs that are orthopedic surgeons, heart doctors, lung doctors. There's that same division in chiropractic where you have docs who, you know, focus more on posture and the angles in the spine. You have docs who specialize in just seeing children or children and, you know, pregnant women or, you know, docs who specialize in neurology and that. So you want to find somebody who's going to usually they'll say on their website that they do a deeper like biomechanical analysis of the spine. And it's just something that not only are, you know, is the doctor there to evaluate you for, you know, subluxations or conditions, you need to be evaluating the doctor. Are they, you know, meeting your needs? So if you bring that up with a chiropractor, like, Hey, listen, I'm really physical, you know, can you give me pointers and tips on proper biomechanics? And they kind of just brush you off, then that's probably not the good fit, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody has their specialty. So you want to find somebody um, who specializes in evaluating biomechanics, who has that back or more sports medicine type background where they are looking at the longevity, right? Like I have a you know, patients who are semi-pro, pro pro athletes, collegiate athletes, high school athletes. And it's all about, they're coming to see me because they want to stay in tip top shape so that they can, you know, stay in their sport as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And people who have uh, physical labor jobs are in that same boat, right? Like we want to maximize your body's ability to function whether you're, you know, dribbling a basketball down the court or a football down the field, you guys want to stay as mobile, active as possible because just like these professional athletes, that's your source of income. And so, you know, finding somebody who specializes more sports medicine is going to focus more on the biomechanics of the body, proper movement um, in your manual labor jobs versus somebody who's, you know, adjusting babies all day or which needs, we need that specialty. There's nothing wrong with that specialty. It's just a specialty. And so you need to find somebody who's focused more on the overall spinal biomechanics and longevity for your physical type modalities. Okay. No, and I think you bring up a good point. It's been talked about on this show of, when we go to do an estimate, I'm interviewing the client as much as they're interviewing me to see if mm-hmm. we're a good fit for each other. Do I think this person's going to be a crazy loon to work with? Do they really want me? Is this a price thing? Right? Like, there's a ton of different things to evaluate, and so oh, for sure, to, to bring up that, like, hey, you probably need to pick up the phone, and and you can't just go to the first chiropractor you find on on Google or, the or cheapest, whatever, right? Or yeah, the, you know, who's got the best Groupon deal or whatever? Mm-hmm. You know, definitely. You know, you need to do your research, get recommendations, just like you would if you were, you know, looking for a doctor to deliver your baby or you're looking, you know, to have that knee surgery or whatever. You you want to find the provider who's going to be a best fit for you as much as you're a good fit for them. Mm-hmm. No, totally. You got to build the that relationship and make sure that it it fits your needs. <clears throat> and so mm-hmm. you're going to get the the information you want. Like there's the, the local place here. We won't mention the name, but what mm-hmm. do you call it? The, you can, you can go in and, and it's, it's fairly cheap and they do what, what you call the flying seven, right? Like they yes. just kind of like, yes. it's these seven different things. Turn of this like, way, turn, everybody gets the same adjustment. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, it's not individualized. You're not really looking out for like, what's going to work best for me. It's just, this is quick and easy and we can, run you through and then we're going to get another person in here in the next 15 minutes and we'll just it, it's oh, the, it's the, it's the uh the fast food of of chiropractics 
That's a great way to put it. Definitely. And it's a, it's kind of a cookie cutter. Everybody gets the same <clears throat> a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it's uh, it, look for most of the population, it probably works, but there's going to oh, be people 80%. that it, it doesn't work. The population. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that, that specializing comes in handy. Uh, how does health, I mean, this gives us overall health. So like, what, what am I getting when I come in? Right. Like what is seeing a chiropractor actually going to do for me besides that? I can sit there and talk to you and you can walk me through how to move my body properly, but what is getting an adjustment like actually do for me? How is that helping me function better? So in the simplest sense, if you woke up in the morning and you were not able to straighten your elbow all the way out, you would be like, um, this isn't normal. I need this addressed. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like, can you be on it right away? Because it's affecting your daily life. It's affecting everything that you do. So what happens in the spine is we have over 26 joints in the spine. And so as a chiropractor, what we look for is joints that are not moving the way that they should. So there's multiple different reasons why that joint stops moving the way it is. It could be trauma, like a repetitive, I go into this position every day, it puts stress on this point, A, um, and <clears throat> so the vertebra um, a co- you know, uh, compensates by the muscles in the area locking that that joint down, or it could be like everything from environmental toxins to things that are in our food to medications that we take can also be toxic to our body, to even like thought processes can cause physical changes in the body. Right? What's the number one fear everybody has? public speaking. So you start thinking about public speaking and it's not your jam and your hands start sweating, your body starts shaking. So our thoughts definitely affect how our body functions as well. So as a chiropractor, we're looking for those joints that aren't moving the way they should be. And our terminology for that is that it is subluxated. So it's not completely dislocated. So sub is less than a complete dislocation. And from a biomechanical standpoint, when I don't have motion at the joints in the spine, um, the disc, that fluidy substance in that sac between our jo- uh, mm-hmm. spinal joints starts to degenerate because it can only get nutrition if there's motion happening at the segment. And here's what happens. Like I said, there's 26 articulations. So if even half of them aren't moving, the other half compensate. So it's not that you can feel, some people can get to know their body well enough that they're like, oh, I feel a little bit tight in this region of the spine. Um, But those joints not moving biomechanically increase the rate of degeneration, right? If I want arthritis to set in your joint and I want it to set in fast and grow fast, I stop moving that joint. So by placing, you know, we've done research that shows that it takes a minimum of 14 days of a joint not moving before arthritis starts to set in on the microscopic level. So if you have a joint that's restricted motion for years, that's where you start developing, um, you know, big bony changes that we can then see on x-ray. So from a biomechanical standpoint, 100% getting adjusted regularly helps maintain motion at the segments, which then allows the body and the disc to get its nutrition. And another factor um, that people don't um, give as much credit to is that the brain and your spinal cord control every function that occurs in your body. Every single cell is controlled by the brain and the spinal cord. And what we know on a, what we would call neurological on the nerve level is that when I'm not having motion at a segment, it affects the nerves and the spinal cord at that segment and our immune system how our endocrine system works, how, you know, information, the brain talking to the body and the body talking. 
all get affected as well when our joints and our spine aren't moving the way that they should. You just make it sound like I'm going to die. <laughs> well, you I, just... don't want to make it, I don't want to make it sound like you're going to die in the next, you know, 24 hours or anything like that. But if you're really looking to maintain your health and be as healthy as possible, chiropractic has to be part of your regime. Just like going to the dentist, right? Like your cavity when it starts doesn't produce pain. Only 10% of the nerves in your body actually transmit pain. The other 90% move your food along your digestive tract, you know, release hormones, absorb nutrients. They're, they have all other tasks that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So using pain as a guide as to whether you need to go into the chiropractor or not kind of doesn't work. It's kind of like you go to the dentist regardless for your cleaning, whether you have pain in your teeth or not. If you waited till you had pain, now you're looking at a full on root canal, right? Yeah. So being proactive, if your goal is longevity and your goal is, you know, you want to maximize your life, then you know, taking the best care of yourself is important. So it does sound like a death sentence if you don't get adjusted. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm totally kidding, but you're just like, ah, this is going to break and this isn't going to work. And I'm sitting there thinking through like the abuse yeah, I, mean, I like, put my body through. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, yeah, no wonder I probably don't yeah. feel good. Like nothing's yeah, working right. But kind of like, you know, when you wore a, a baseball hat all day long, and then you take it off, but you kind of feel like you're still wearing it. Mm -hmm. That's what happens to your body. It learns to operate at a lower and a lower and a lower level until that becomes what feels normal for you. And I see it with my nutrition clients or training clients all the time. Like they eat clean for like six, eight weeks. And I'm like, man, I'm feeling amazing. I got this energy. My skin looks great. Like, holy cow. Mm -hmm. And then there's a birthday party or a snafu or something like that. And they have to run through the drive through at McDonald's. You know, it, we, we've all had to do it, right? Um, but they eat that food and all of a sudden they feel like, oh my God, I feel like crap. Am I going to feel like this every time I eat McDonald's now? Well, guess what? You were, that was your baseline. You were feeling like that all the time and that was normal for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Now we've up leveled and then you consume that, you know, fast food and your body has to, it's like putting poor grade gas in a car you can't expect you know a ferrari or a lamborghini um to work as effectively when you're putting gunked up gasoline in there you mm -hmm. want to put high grade gasoline in there you have to think of your body as that same you know motor the better nutrition i give my body the better it can operate well, so that's 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 a good segue because that's where I want to kind of go. So you've <laughs> it is into the nutritional aspect of it because it does all play together. And so my wife's been seeing you for uh, I don't know what probably like over a year, two years now. But like you, uh -huh. she got serious about you know, hey, I need to make a change in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and so you found out that she was gonna have like really bad arthritis, and you were like, okay, look, you can do. X, Y, and Z. And so you, you've had her change her eating habits. She's having to like work out a little bit now and she's doing like a ton of walking. And so, you know, she's, she's changed her, her diet and what she like intakes. She's being more active and exercising. She's seeing you for the chiropractic care as well. And she looks way better. She's not as like sore all the time. Although the past couple of days she's been complaining, but she's had some long days and whatnot, but it's, she's way happier and healthier than she's been in a long time. And so I'm watching mm -hmm. that and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, well, I'm just getting fatter. Like, okay, like <laughs> this is not cool. So I need to do something, but I can see that there's benefits when I'm not shoving a breakfast sandwich from the gas station down my throat. That's full of preservatives and you all just this unnatural stuff. I, I'm sure I did. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and, you know, I'm not eating some kind of processed bread and, and meat for lunch. And then at dinner, I'm getting like my wife's making all this stuff that like, I don't even want to eat half of it because I'm just like, that's not my thing. Right. I'm going to I want like steak and potatoes every night or some kind of meat and potatoes mm-hmm. that ain't going to work. So I pr- apparently need to eat like the zucchini boat that's filled with whatever in the middle and, and make it happen <laughs> for myself. But I look at it I'm like that is not my jam. Yes. Like I cannot do this. So it's it's basically what we did um, with your wife was we looked at her lab work and it showed that. Um, so if I twist my ankle, OK, mm-hmm. let's use this example. I twist my ankle. It swells up and I have what's called an inflammatory response. So damaged tissue releases certain chemicals, which then release, you know, sends this whole cascade of inflammatory response to my ankle. And that inflammation locally is important because that's what triggers, you know, the scar tissue to form in the torn tendon or ligament and, you know, or if you fracture a bone to stimulate the new bone growth and whatnot. So localized um, inflammation when I damage a joint or ligaments or tendons or, you know, stretch a muscle, that's important because that then drives the repair process. However, there's another type of inflammation that we have in our body and that's called systemic inflammation. Systemic means that it is located all over my body and that systemic inflammation is like the number one cause of any type of disease that you can think of whether we're talking about high blood pressure we're talking about cholesterol levels elevated we're talking about diabetes type 2 we're talking about even alzheimer's which is actually being categorized as a type 3 diabetes but All of this systemic inflammation even affects like the chemicals that are produced in your brain. So with depression, you know, you hear people all the time like, oh, well, just, you know, quit being unhappy, right? Well, Mm -hmm. it's a chemical process in the brain. Um, You know, just like diabetes is a chemical hormonal process in your body. Um, And you can't just well, I don't want to be a diabetic anymore. I'm just going to will myself not to have diabetes. You can't will yourself not to have depression. However, the foods that you eat either promote the hormones that and neurotransmitters, chemicals in your brain that push you to have depression or the foods you consume actually then promote more of the hormones and chemicals in your brain that promote happiness and feeling satisfied and positive thoughts in the brain. So basically there's three things that I talk about that promote inflammation in the body. So generally those three things are sugar. So all of like your white breads and that, um, donuts, candies, anything sugary promotes inflammation in the body. Number two, your bad fats. So you're like when your French fries are grilled in, you know, lard, animal fats are all bad fats. Your mono and polyunsaturated fats, which are more plant-based fats, from nuts and seeds and other plants are way more healthy fat avocado and that are your healthy fats Mm -hmm. and then the third um substance that promotes inflammation in your body is going to be grains so wheat um you know oats things like that like they need to be consumed in smaller quantities and they need to be consumed unprocessed Um, So those are the three major things that promote inflammation in your body. So when you work all day, right, you have micro damage that occurs, you know, as you're kneeling or carrying heavy stuff up and down stairs, like that activates your muscles, your muscles, you know, break down slightly as you're doing that. And then it causes that localized inflammatory response. But when you then on your way home, drive through, you know, Jack in the box and pick up like a, you know, 
bacon, I don't know, some crazy sandwich with a bunch of patties and bacon and cheese and, and all that <laughs> stuff with the fries and the Coke, that is like a trifecta of crap to promote inflammation in the body. So then your joints are going to hurt more. It's you're going to feel sore. It's going to promote the negative chemicals in your brain that are going to make you feel like, what do I care if I'm fat and sitting on the couch and my body hurts? Like I'm not getting up and exercising. Like it's a whole mind process then. And you kind of go into this downward spiral where if you eat healthier, lean meats, vegetables, fruits, and just a small amount of like grains in your diet, then you're promoting those happy hormones. You're going to have more energy. You're going to feel better overall. Your body's not going to hurt as much. You can go out with the family in the evening, walk the dog, go for a hike after a day's worth of work. Like I have patients tell me all the time, man, I don't know how you get up and you're at the gym at 5 a.m. You work out for an hour. You know, I physically work out and practice picking up people, sliding them around my table. Phys- I, you know, I do more of a physical adjustment process. Mm-hmm. Come home, might go for a hike, take the dogs for a walk, you know, and then, you know, I continue to be active throughout the day, even um, outside of work and outside the gym. So that energy, that ability to do that can be dependent on, you know, this overall systemic inflammation. So the less systemic inflammation you have, the less all of your joints are going to hurt, the better you're going to feel overall. And then you'll be more likely to go for that walk to make the healthier choices for yourself. I think you just ruined like 90% Ninety percent of the flooring installer population's <laughs> dreams of ever accomplishing anything by saying, "You guys got to change your entire lifestyle. Just get get your shit together and change your entire lifestyle." Well, you know, all of the not all, but a majority of disease comes from lifestyle choices. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The foods that you consume the activities that you perform or don't perform. I I mean, it, it sounds like, Oh, you sound like you're asking me to change. Well, yeah. Like what's your priority? Are you wanting to, you know, just work until you can't work anymore and then you're unhappy and you're in all sorts of pain. So you spent your entire life working just to sit around and be, you know, this, lump that hurts all the time Mm -hmm. or are you working to save your money so that you know when you retire now you and your wife can go travel and you can go you know enjoy other activities it's it's choices and you know I'm not here to you know judge anybody for the choices that they make everybody is you know free to make their own choices it's just don't complain when you know you're not able to do what you wanted to do because of the choices you made when you were younger Mm -hmm. no i i totally agree with you and it's not (laughs) it look that's we we as adults are are making the choices that we make you're right and so we have to accept the consequences we can't have Mm -hmm. our cake and eat it too uh, yeah, I, and I, there's just no magic pill. There's no magic, like, I have to eat like this for the rest of my life. Well, you were eating like you were eating, and you're going to plan on eating like that for the rest of your life, right? So, yeah, sort of. <laughs> correct. Well, and it's not, look, when the word diet gets misused, especially in Western culture. Like, th- we don't live in a favorable society for the changes you're talking about, like th- it, that's not the culture that you're we've the, built. Yeah, and you're and the so black sheep. Uh, it, but the word diet is, is totally misused because diet infers your total lifestyle. What you're, it's not just what you're eating. It, it's how you interact with the world, right? It's your exercise mm-hmm. routine. It's, it's what you're putting in your body. And so everybody hears the word, to. everybody yeah. hears diet now and they're like, Oh, it's just another fad of like 
eat only watermelon for, you know, three meals a day, six days a week, and you're going to lose a hundred pounds. Well, no, that's. Oh, you might, but then what's (laughs) going to happen at the end of that is you're going to go back to eating your Big Macs and you're back in the box and you're going to be right back where you were. Correct. It's yeah. It's more about a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the point is that we have to do something different than what we're doing. Our society doesn't necessarily condone what's happened like we've built a society that's based on ease and comfort mm-hmm. where as you said right we're designed to move about and and work all day right you used to have to mm-hmm. be out on the farm and you'd wake up and you got to take care of the animals and you got to plant the plants and you got to harvest them and then you got to make the food and and get it canned and like there was stuff to do all day because you, mm-hmm. it, that's how long it, it took so yeah now we can have the convenience of great I, I go to the mcdonald's and get food or i go to the grocery store and i can get a tv dinner or I, even if i'm gonna cook something but it's still most likely some kind of genetically modified whatever that isn't <laughs> it's still not great for me right okay i'm eating he- mm-hmm. i'm eating healthier but the food's still not even like healthy at this point well it's just over processed right the the dirt that it's grown in has been growing that food again and again and again without you know, rotating crops without, you know, restoring the nutrition. So, you know, I think the obesity epidemic, just like heart disease, isn't just one thing. Mm -hmm. It's you can't just, you know, like for the longest time, oh, low fat, and then you won't have heart disease. Well, it's not really the fat um, that's causing the problem, right? It's more the carbohydrate, but that's a whole nother subject. But the food that's being produced now, um, nutritious, nutritionally has less nutrients than it probably did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. And so your body needs that nutrition. And so it's going to feel hungry until it gets the nutrition that it needs. And so you have to consume more of the food excuse me, to obtain that nutrition. And so, yeah, I mean, definitely making healthier food choices, you know, trying to as much as possible, I call it shopping around the edge of the supermarket Mm -hmm. um, instead of, you know, boxes, bags, cans, you know, the food in the center of the store can sit there for two months. We want the food around the edges that, you know, have to be in coolers that are going to spoil, that are going to go bad because that's where we're going to get our nutrition from, not the highly processed foods. Great tip. Great tip. <laughs> um, okay. So is there something that I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Ah. Then if you, I, I, you're probably not doing a lot of classes for independent people. I know you're doing tutoring and, and classes for chiropractic students. Um, mm-hmm. But if, if people want to reach out to you, if, if anyone locally wants to go see you, how, how do they find you? How do they reach you? Where can they go get adjusted and nutrition information and, and get pointed in the right direction to be healthy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I have a office in um, Old Town Gilbert, downtown Gilbert area, just off of Gilbert between Warner and Elliott. Um, You can find the office information easily online. It's called All Seasons Chiropractic. Um, You can even schedule yourself online. Everything's automated. Um, It makes my life a lot easier that way. Um, But I do do, like, if you're looking for, like, nutrition um, consulting in that, um, you know, I have options to do it via my – electronic health system i can do like encoded uh video teleconferencing um for nutrition if you're not interested in the chiropractic aspect and you just want you know some advice about eating healthier making healthier choices for you what that would look like i do you know consulting online all the time for people across the country um but um actual chiropractic yeah my office is in uh, old town gilbert 
Okay. And if, if somebody is out of state, do you do you have friends in like other oh, parts yeah, of the country yeah, yeah. that you'd be I like, mean, this I, go yeah, to this person? I've, yes, I do. I do. So um, the other thing you kind of mentioned where I tutor and work with students. So um, I've been teaching students for the last 20 years. So there's not a state or a city pretty much um, in the world right now um, that, you know, where chiropractic's legal that um, I probably don't know somebody. Like I know the one and only chiropractor in Estonia. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. So definitely I can assist in helping you find somebody um, that would fit your need regardless of where you are. Okay. And I'm sure your email's probably on your website, I'm assuming. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Look yeah. up All Seasons Chiropractic. Find the email. Shoot her an email. She'll help you out. She'll get you that nutrition going and and get you squared away. And then we just have to work on the on the biomechanics and and moving properly. Yes, for sure. Oh, all right. Well, all right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on and and being the expert, getting us pointed in the right direction, and helping us become healthier so that our our brains tell us we're happy instead of sad and depressed and sore and then we Mm -hmm. can run a more effective business there you go sounds amazing thank you thank you for your time no thank you all right i'll chat with you soon all right Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. bye that's all the time we have for this week to keep the conversation going head on over to the floor academy facebook group Be sure to subscribe so you can hear each and every episode. We can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and most major podcast directories. Don't forget to leave a review and let us know what you think about the show. If you would like to be a guest, have questions or feedback, you can email us at flooracademypodcast at gmail.com. You can help support the show by becoming a patron over at www.patreon.com slash flooracademy. Remember to learn well you earn. Flooring Domain is an award-winning online flooring directory and service marketplace that helps you find more customers, grow your online presence and reputation, or your brand. Whether you are a carpet store or flooring installer, perhaps a tile contractor, there are jobs for everyone with a daily stream of customers visiting Flooring Domain and looking for experts like you. Flooring Domain offers a free listing option that allows you to find new customer leads. You can set up a free account at Flooring Domain by visiting flooringdomain.us. Have you ever tried to install LVP on steps only to struggle with the solution for the stair nose? Introducing Snap Caps by Snap Tech. You simply send Snap Tech the exact LVP your customer selects, and they'll turn it into a perfectly matched stair nose that clicks flush into the tread plank for a simple and reliable solution. Visit www.snaptech.biz to learn more or place an order.